uh, good morning or oh, good evening. Uh, it depends on the country. Where are you? <laughs> And um, I'm trying to gather information from different respective resources about um, uh, circular economy and sustainable development. And um, uh, I would like uh, to say that you can uh, then look this uh, uh, more about this uh, in this presentation and uh, uh, find more information about this and different resources about uh, the theme. And uh, it is just a short presentation that uh, uh, where I tried to consolidate uh, uh, my understanding of this theme and how we can develop it. And I think that it could inspire people um, to shift uh, in the circular economy mindset and uh, uh, to find new solutions in this sphere. And I think it is one of the important parts of our collaboration and uh, speak what we are speaking today about this theme. I would like to speak about sustainable development and to, um, to say that um, sustainable development is uh, about uh, finding balance between uh, economic development, social uh, well-being and um, uh, ecological protection. And uh, for example, I would like to show you a territory um, where a lot of people live, not a lot, but uh, there are towns and cities and uh, uh, people there need uh, development. They need uh, schools, the social infrastructure, schools, hospitals, they need roads or, for example, sewage systems. Uh, it is one of important themes in this, but um, they had... Uh, like uh, we say about sustainable development, um, ecological restrictions. In this special territory, it is because it is a national park. So it is a protected area. So we have a lot of uh, ecological um, uh, things that uh, banned in some territories we can't build at all and so on, or have uh, different um, other criteria so that we could not... Uh, um change <laughs> and it is uh, hard for citizens to find any ability to uh have uh, any business or how to do how to prom promote uh, their possibilities to grow and so on it is hard and um uh, one of uh, the good um, part that uh, it has a beautiful nature and healing springs on this territory. So uh, this territory could be uh, developed as a tu touristic territory. But of course, touristic territory, uh, it means that a lot of tourists will come and they will bring a lot of litter and it is a great pressure of uh, the existing infrastructure. And uh, this is their new, I don't know, challenges <laughs> for the system. So, um, and uh, how to find this balance? We are speaking about balance if you speak about sustainable development. And it is, uh, uh, I think that I would like to say, I would to continue the thought that Dr. Karen said, that uh, uh, it is about um, communication. We need to find these uh, opportunities uh, to find where we can find uh, this decision between all stakeholders uh, that um, uh, in this territory. It is very hard. It is really hard. And uh, it has, uh, we need a lot of efforts to do this. And it could take a lot of time for uh, moving uh, in the right direction. And uh, it is uh, a big protest. I was uh, in this um, team of consortium of Tunkinski Valley, and still, uh, it was in 2020 when to, it was a uh, quarantine, and uh, still, uh, there are a lot of things that are discussing between different parts of society uh, there with people on this territory and how. Um, which rules should be on this territory, where and uh, and how and so on, it is hard. And I would like to say, and the 
the bigger challenge is uh, if we see in the global picture, because when we understand it is uh, uh, just this situation, but if we see the uh, population growth and the consumption rates, we understand there, as uh, we saw in the picture, the biggest uh, problem that we have. and. Uh, such great speeds that we can't uh, uh, solve this, uh, find these decisions in such a big speed. Yes, it is very hard. And uh, especially I would like to speak because I'm an architect about uh, built environment. And if we see on the, uh, if we, you can look on the chart and you can see this global uh, material resource outlook to uh, uh, 2060 of um, uh, organization of economic collaboration development that uh, they um, built uh, construction materials dominate resource of of consumption and uh, it will um, and uh, there is the interconnection of uh, the economic growth city development and demand uh, the success uh, the consumption of material later so because of this the, it is um, when we uh, build infrastructure for uh, city built infrastructure, there there are a lot of buildings will be built there. So we need a lot of materials that will consume later. So it is um, like double uh, these um, materials that we will use more, more, more. So uh, and the main consumption material is metal. Metals are there. It's not about when we speak about a uh, bio economy, we think that uh, uh, wood and something will be more. No, <laughs> it's about concrete and metals. So <laughs> it's uh, like uh, when uh, we saw the picture of uh, uh, the consumption, it is um, more man made environment than green environment uh, now and it is a little bit frightening because the cities are uh, not so big uh, on the uh, planet so it's a little bit uh, um, challenging <laughs> yes and um, I would like uh, to say that um, uh, this is all uh, about building roads and things that we really need and our grandchildren will need. And I would like to say that uh, it's about final resources. And uh, the main challenge that uh, and the main uh, idea that uh, we are speaking now, everyone, <laughs> uh, how to decouple this uh, uh, extraction. So we need these uh, buildings, we need these uh, roads, and we need these, uh, but how uh, to make it uh, more responsible, how to be more responsible to this build, built environment, how to make something <laughs> better that uh, we have on a chart. So how to decouple extraction from development, uh, just a small um, uh, steps in this field could have a better result in the future. And um, these uh, effective uh, decisions, I think, they start from the point um, uh, that uh, it is a um, um, long-term approach of managing responsibilities. And I think about long-term approach that we need to shift our view from the, the short approach, but to long-term approach. It is the from my point of view. And um, uh, when we speak about architecture and built environment uh, and architects, uh, we should understand that uh, we create buildings that have a span, a lifespan about 50 uh, years or more. Uh, it could be 100 years. So our grandchildren will um, use these uh, buildings and how we build this, for example, operational uh, cost uh, of you know, energy, uh, energy consumption that we uh, decide how building will be built. So uh, is it... Um, uh, how, uh, um, for example, uh, in Russia it is cold, so it is important because our operational part more than embodied part of the building. In some countries it's not so, but in Russia it is a real problem. So we need to, to build really energy, effect, energy efficiency buildings. And um, the other uh, thing that urban development, it could influence on the um, uh, decisions that we make now will influence rather more. So if it is uh, 100, it could be hundreds of years. 
and uh, some cities that are built, uh, we we need to um, work with with what we have, and <laughs> we can't uh, sometimes uh, uh, really find a new solution. So we need to change something. But so this is very important to speak about built environment and how it is a part of this. Uh, um, uh, main goal because it it is how we uh, manage our household how we manage our life it is and if you know that the economy is from uh, the greek word uh, uh, it is how to um uh, operate in your house <laughs> in your system how to operate it it is about architecture and our life Yes, and uh, circular economy concepts says that we need to think about uh, how we create value. So how could we move to this uh, way of decoupling? Uh, it is so uh, we need to from long term. Yes, we now we see uh, now we uh, see only this part how we uh, produce, how we assemble, how we distribute materials yes this is how we create the value and we don't see the other opportunities of uh, adding and um, um, capturing the value so we could have uh, other um, models i think uh, the uh, other speaker will speak uh, about uh, this more i don't know <laughs> but i think um, uh, this is important that we don't see this picture. We need to uh, show that there is, um, uh, if we see from this perspective, for this, uh, with this view, it will help us to find other opportunities to speak with uh, these people, uh, uh, for example, on this territory, with uh, in other um was to find a common uh, language and it is uh, important to move to these uh, um, new economies i think and um, one of uh, the important part i think is assistant thinking because um, as a uh, we need uh, radical uh, business model changes, and uh, sometimes uh, this uh, value change was created by ages, by centuries, and uh, uh, it is very hard to build another system. And um, uh, I think if we s uh, see more uh, data information and uh, how we can manage the system, and the there are opportunities now to calculate it, to measure it, to uh, it gives us more information to. Understand understand how to move uh, uh, in this direction. <laughs> and uh, of course, I like uh, this chart of El Mokerto Foundation that gives us <laughs> a positive view that uh, uh, this system thinking helps uh, could help us eliminate waste sh um, to incorporate sharing your um, reuse in this system. And um, of course, uh, it will help us to reduce um, impact of built environment uh, uh, by of uh, key materials uh, to uh, 38% and it is huge <laughs> uh, if you, we saw the chart before it is a very good opportunity for us and in the circular economy mindset we're trying to design out weight on the first step and I would like to speak about circle design strategy. Uh, it is a little bit different from when we speak about just uh, recycling materials and healthy materials, like we uh, speak in a, about when we speak about green buildings and so on. And uh, it is uh, um, about uh, circle design strategy as well, uh, circle um, business uh, strategy as well, because we need to um, uh, use the new system of procure. So procure, procure is uh, the um, uh, main uh, possibility to uh, change uh, the system to find the economic um, uh, value uh, in this in using the resources uh, in the circular economy so uh um so this gives us uh, so businesses are not losing out because of obligation towards keeping materials in circulation this is the main thing that um, uh, this model product as a service when we, you you can see this is a it is good for 
uh, a company that buy it, uh, buy this service, <laughs> not a product, for example, lamp. It is not buying, for example, uh, Philips lighting for circularity. Uh, they just, it is like a service of lighting. So, and there are a lot of other models that uh, similar to these, uh, which moves from ownership to renting. And this is uh, uh, part of this uh, system when we think about uh, how we should change the system. For example, uh, our material will um, uh, not... Um, uh, so it is now in this building, then it will be in that building, and then will be, it is like, for example, passport, and one system. Other system, it is about lighting, how it is... Um, uh, that we use, uh, that the company that um, give us this uh, lighting, they um, uh, manage it, they uh, try to make these um, details more uh, quality because uh, they honor this uh, and like uh, they like give you opportunity to use it. Uh, uh, and it is good for, I don't know, to it is more desirable for people to use this more than their own ship, for example, their own car or their own, I don't know, because they need to manage it too. They need to pay for how to, ch when to change it and to other things. And so it is comfortable. And, uh, I, um, and uh, another thing that I would like to say that we need to, initiate such economy in our cities and um, uh, I would like to say about one more thing that um, is important that uh, when we speak about architecture and the buildings more yes so we have uh, such problem that uh, there are buildings that are abandoned and old and um, we have uh, this idea that we want to have creative economy and uh, new models and new city, and we have these abandoned uh, territories. And what should we do with uh, these uh, places, uh, uh, which uh, we can't, uh, as I said, for example, we can't uh, disassemble uh, elements of this building and uh, uh, use uh, passports of. Um, materials and use it as other, in other place because architects of that uh, time didn't say that it, it that we will need it and it was built as it built it is uh, um uh old uh, building in, in near the center of moscow uh, and this one too and um, uh, sometimes people doesn't know what is um, there uh there is a fence just just it <laughs> they didn't know <laughs> oh, and um uh in russia there was a good i think um uh it is like educational program like accelerator when uh, um people uh, try to find this abandoned uh, buildings as uh, what what was uh, i don't know uh, and to organize communities creative communities to, uh, which can manage it to find uh, new solutions how to integrate this uh, to the city and uh, all over russia it uh, was and the it was education about how to um uh, find this creative people how to uh, all all about this and i think it's um, a very good example because it uh, it's about education too i think uh, to spread ideas knowledge is very important in regions because for example in moscow we can speak english and <laughs> communicate I, I understand that my English is not very good, but I'll try <laughs> to communicate. And sometimes uh, somewhere in, I don't know, uh, countryside or in other uh, city, they can't communicate with you. And uh, they need this knowledge too, and uh, how to do this. And I think it is important to share this. Uh, and uh, the next thing that I would, from the circular point of view, the best building is that that was um, renewed. So this community created uh, possibilities to renew this building. So it will have uh, less consumption uh, from uh, other uh, resources. And so because uh, we, most of the uh, carbon uh, um, 
uh, budget of the building. It is construction, so it is embodied, uh, embodied carbon. And uh, the uh, other thing very important is operation. So we need to change, for example, windows or something, uh, some infrastructure in this uh, to be uh, in the future more ecological, more um, sustainable. Uh, and uh, if we speak about the um, Embodied carbon, uh, the next point of them is uh, storage of carbon. So uh, how we, uh, so we could build buildings using bio-based materials, so which storage the carbon. And um, uh, I think it is uh, uh, possibilities to um, find uh, new materials, for example, as byproducts of agriculture. And uh, I'm sorry, I would like to, to speak faster, but um, and uh, I think it is important uh, from regenerative uh, point of view to uh, find such um, infrastructure decisions that uh, uh, will um, move us uh, as uh, William McDonough said, from uh, not doing less bad, but doing le uh, more good by um, in, uh, by to synchronize with nature, to use this um, uh, that nature gives uh, and um, it is uh, the road map for water system and road map for. Uh, sustainable food, uh, food uh, sustainable markets in Milan, and I think um, cities uh, has uh, the greatest opportunity to uh, to um, uh, to use this um, new systems uh, approach uh, and to uh, collaborate with. Um, um, private sector and uh, it uh, these roadmaps uh, could uh, uh, help us to move uh, to move together to uh, give common uh, to have common targets and um, the next thing that i want to say that uh, if we speak about uh, cities we uh, and about built environment we need to speak about not only consumption of products and materials we need to speak about uh, consumption of lands as well Yes, if we saw on this picture for the food market, we understand that this is production of, for example, um, we lose a lot of food uh, and uh, uh, when because of the long chains. So we need uh, short chains, yes? And this is um, about uh, that land that we lost. So we need to analyze uh, the system more comprehensively and uh, the next thing is uh, we need to think more about get the system services of our um, uh, ecological possibilities of nature, forests, of uh, wetlands, and how our city could uh, grow not so I don't know, aggressive. And how we, because, for example, on one project that I showed, uh, we have um, uh, this uh, problem that uh, um, in uh, the in uh, the temperature will high in the cities and the dense cities will um, be impossible there to live. And uh, if we don't think how we will adapt uh, to this situation in the future, how city will infrastructure it, will adapt to this situation. And we see the difference, for example, in some, uh, uh, in the center of the this city near um, market, big shopping mall uh, and, uh, place like here in the suburb, 15 degrees difference. So, uh, and what will be if the temperature will be higher? So uh, I think it's uh, very important. And this is some kind of uh, common <laughs> um, uh, diagram of these uh, connections of urban and, and how we should analyze always and design using this uh, uh, data and new technologies uh, to find the better solutions for each uh, territory with its unique uh, culture resources, uh, its unique uh, system. Yes, this is about just uh, uh, we need to share experience. I think this is very important and this is how I would like to contribute to uh, my society and to, uh, I don't know, to share our opinions and 
thoughts <laughs> in the future. Maybe you will come in the International Architectural Congress to share your um, thoughts and so on. And this is how I organized uh, meetings in my uh, society, local society, where we try to make local actions. So thank you very much. I'm sorry if I'm <laughs> a little bit late.